Welcome to the Heathcote Tech Podcast. We are back with another episode, and today, Megan Matthews and Francesca Ross, our two LRC teachers, are joining me to review the materials that they presented at the Parent Coffee a couple of weeks ago to give parents who didn't have a chance to attend that an opportunity to hear what was said and see the resources that were shared during that event. So thank you for joining us. Thanks for having us. We're really excited to be here. Just a little bit about us. We are both the LR Learning Center, Learning Resource Center teachers here at Heathcote. We, I've had over 10 years of experience in the district and my friend, Ms. Ross has had the same. It's nice to virtually speak with all of you. So we get asked this a lot, what to do when your child needs help with their homework. And both as teachers and as moms, we can understand where you're coming from. Um, even our own children don't wanna do homework with us and we are quote unquote, the experts. So we have some tips and tools that we use here at school and at home that really do help your child be successful and independent with their homework. First, it's about the environment. So we, we encourage parents to create a consistent routine and think about where your child will work best when they're focusing on their homework setting that same place every day and making sure they have all their resources. Uh, Megan at home, she has her stuff box that's full of anything that her daughter might need. So making a box of school supplies as well as if they need a water bottle or making sure that that environment is set entirely for them and it's directed toward homework. Uh, setting a time limit and eliminating distractions are ways to not only avoid frustration, but making sure that you um, have your child and they're able to attend as best as they can to their homework. I think it's also really important for some students, they like to push the hardest subject or the hardest task to the end. We really advocate that get it done, get it done first is probably the best way when they're focused and they're ready to go. Um, and also as our students are getting older, making a plan for those long-term assignments, whether you're using a dry erase calendar at home, maybe your child's own device, or just making a family calendar and just finding different ways to help them stay organized. Another tool that you can use is a checklist. So taking a look at a sample checklist, and this doesn't have to be the one that you could use at home, but it, it lists the, do I have my components? Um, and you think about anything that your child needs on a consistent basis. This can be put into a sheet protector, or if you have a laminator, it can be laminated and a dry erase marker can be used to check off the boxes for each of the items that they need. And on the bottom of our checklist, we have a did I, and this is where we like to teach kids independently the ability to regulate and have the idea of, did I check in with my parents? Did I do all of my assignments? Did I pack everything that I needed? So they're starting to think about their own organization and increasing their independence. So a great, what you can put in your box of stuff is a math toolkit. And we have some examples of some tools that you can use. So when students start first start working with word problems, sometimes they're a little bit confused on what the word is telling them to do. We don't always say, let's add. We use words like sum, total, difference, takeaway. So these are some chart words that you can use when you're working with your student. Another math tool we have are number cards. There's lots of different ways that you can use this. You can use this to have them put numbers in order. You can have them create larger numbers. You can use them to compare. This is just a great tool that you can have and use with our younger students for talking K-1-2. Tens frame. We always say in math that 10 is our friend. If we can have our base 10 facts down, five and five make 10, six and four make 10. This is a great way that you can use different manipulas in your own home. You can use things like Legos. If your child has, I'll date myself and have Polly Pocket and they'll put little Polly Pockets <laughs> in each one and then you can count different ways to make 10. Um, this is a, just a great way to make math concrete and interactive for your child at home. Um, in addition to, we talk a lot about number bonds in our primary grades, where the part and part make whole. The two on the bottom are the parts, and at, together they add up to the whole. You can use this with our word problems. So if you know the whole and you only have one of the parts, what are we doing? We're subtracting. We've got to find that missing part. This is just a great tool that you can use over and over again. One way we like to use these tools over and over again is you can laminate it, but many people don't have a laminator at home. You could put it in a Ziploc, a large Ziploc bag and use a dry erase marker on it so that you can use it over and over again or a sheet protector. Now this is a newer concept in the last few years is that we've been introduced the idea of 
blank number lines where there's no start and there's no end, that the child would be filling in the own numbers to show or highlight the problem that they're working on. So that way we don't have to start at zero and they're working at numbers in the 30 and the number line is so large. They can just put the numbers where they need to start and where they need to end on these number lines. Hundreds chart, it's always a great tool to have. Um, you can find patterns, kids work on their counting skills. This is just a great one to keep again for our primary students, K-1-2. And here's some, a word problem chart for our students in three, four, five. You can see that we're talking a lot of different wording here than we did with our primary grades. This is just something to help keep them focused. We also advocate that our students working on word problems do a lot of underlining and circling and the important information as they work. Again, a multiplication chart, it's always a handy tool to have on um, when you're doing math problems, especially for our older students. And when it comes to generating an English and language arts toolkit, we ask you to really think about your child and think about each of these resources and match them up to what they're working on or what they're working toward. Some of them might work for your students, some of them might not. So first, starting with an alphabet and letter chart, this has um, the sound and symbol relationship for the initial sounds that takes you through the ABCs. This is a chart that the kids use in school um, in phonics through second grade. And this is a personal word wall. A personal word wall helps students to understand these might be tricky words for them to either read or spell, but it gives them a good model and it gives them the idea of which words they're being taught inside of a pattern. That's why the different colors are coming from different units. This is a second grade chart. The next is applying to writing a checklist that we encourage students to look at their own um, writing and written work and find certain types of errors. And we can make it fun and say that you're the detective. You can find capitalization and punctuation errors. Uh, they can check it off after they've completed looking through their written work and then asking them to think about their process. Today I caught whatever the number of errors is and they're able to then um, reflect upon how the process went and how, they're, how they feel about their writing after editing. This is another example of a checklist that would be for the middle grade levels. There's an open space at the bottom that you, they could add something that they are personally working toward. Um, it also gives them the ability to have a visual model for each of the items on the checklist. These we um, included because they can be cut out similar to the number tiles. These are letter tiles and you could um, cut them out individually, keep them in a Ziploc bag for when your young K-1-2 students are working with building words. This is a reading comprehension bookmark. And it's a lot of times we have kids that will be reading and they'll say, I don't know what just happened or I don't understand. Well, this is a, a way of them keeping their comprehension in check by asking them simple questions that helps them think through what they're reading. This could be a bookmark that they could then color and keep with them when they're doing their independent reading. As always, if there are any questions, um, you can reach out to us via email. Um, we hope you like the our podcast, it's our first one. Thanks, mm -hmm. Mr. Casal, for having us. And the resources will be up, and you can click on a link and download them and use them as you need. Yes, thank you both for joining me on the podcast. Um, and your resources will be up on the Heathcote Tech blog, which is blogs.scarzellschools.org slash Heathcote Tech. Thank you very much. Thanks.